fun practicing, which is a little strange to me at training camp. We'll keep score and everything. Everything is scored all day long today. Talk to us a little bit about hawk tackling and what you guys are doing. How are you guys are teaching your defensive players to tackle? I think, Darren, the, the thing we should mention about this is about the strike zone. For us, we, we've created a strike zone that our guys understand. You know, it's below the neck, so the neck and, neck and head is off, off limits, and really above the knees, too, just like a baseball strike zone, so that when we have the, get in those opportunities where you could make a hit that's, that could be questionable, we're really trying to zero in on it. We practice it. We, we talk about it a lot. Those defenseless guys, we really have to be accurate about a placement of, our, of the, the contact. But the tackling thing, you know, we're really trying to, we have totally been committed to getting the head out of tackling. What are some of the things that you look for in a Seattle Seahawk? Well, we're looking for gritty guys, you know. We're looking for, for guys that have great passion, first of all. Guys that uh, are, are resilient, can, you know, can bounce back, that have a, a, a mindfulness that they want to they wanna prove something. It, and that's why, you know, we talk a lot of our guys feel like they got a chip on their shoulder. Well, I, I feel the same way. We, there's a bunch of us here that kind of have that, share that mentality. Uh, it's that you always have something to prove, and it doesn't matter what, what you're up against, and you're not going to care about what the obstacles are. Uh, that's that's really kind of defines grit, and, and that's uh, we found that grit is one of the great indicators have succeeded, people that succeed, and so that's what we're looking for. He worked so hard this summer with me. It ain't really about, about beating somebody, it's about you doing the best you can possibly do. Right Seahawks on three. One, two, three. Seahawks. Wow, that was just a bit of the uh, Seahawks special at training camp mm. on ESPN yesterday. Here's a streak that the Seahawks would like to break. Look at what the last eight Super Bowl champs have done the following season. Four have failed to make it back to the playoffs, and the other four were one and done in the postseason. The last time they won a playoff game, the year after the Super Bowl, the last team to do that was the 2005 Patriots. All right, so we're talking about this. Obviously, we're talking about the Seahawks. What do you expect from them, Skip? I watched that piece yesterday, yeah. and my first thought was, just call the season off. It's yeah. over. They're going to win. <laughs> and then I reflected back on what Michael Robinson said on the oh. show when we were in L.A. Yes, a couple weeks back, and he's SBs. now the, the new ex-Seahawk now, but, but a, a former team leader. The obvious talent losses were Golden Tate and Walter Thurman, but Michael made a very powerful point that the losses of Red Bryant and Chris Clemens out of the defensive line, and especially out of the locker room, will long-term hurt this team mm. in, in maybe in the playoffs because he wouldn't even go so far as to say they would get back to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to lean in that direction. I know it's early, but I will say they will struggle just leadership-wise and, and they will not win in the championship game. They will not get back to the Super Bowl. Wow. That's, um... That blew your hair back, didn't it? Mm -hmm. No, you know what? It, it didn't. No? Um, one of the things about when you're hungry and you're starving and you'll do anything to get something to eat, but when you finally get grab something to eat, you don't quite go after it the way that you once did. And I'm not saying that they're not even talking about that because they probably have been. Yeah. They probably have been talking about not letting up. They probably have been talking about um, all the things that we did last year to get to the point of winning the Super Bowl. And I'm talking about that chip that they had on their shoulder. They played with such a chip, like everybody, and we all use it at some point, the disrespectful mm -hmm. card. And I've used it at different times. <laughs> they used it to the utmost because they won the championship. Yeah. You lose all the guys that you just talked about, Chris Clems, especially mm -hmm. Thurman. You lose those guys. You have a running back who's the feature mm -hmm. of your offense, in my opinion, not, not, not sleeping on Russell Wilson yeah. or what he does because he's definitely an a, a up-and-coming um, you know, good quarterback and does a great job of, of uh, making right decisions. But that offense, in my opinion, is driven by that running attack. And when you have a guy that's holding out, the likelihood of an opportunity uh, Hoping he does not, but we've seen it before. When guys hold out, injuries then ensue mm -hmm. going yeah, forward. That's true. Mm -hmm. So you have so many things up in the air, and I do agree with the loss of Tate as far as the mentality side, yeah. whether from the receivers on that on that side of the ball. I still think that this team is deep enough. I think that they've done a good job of the competition and practice. When I watched that tape yesterday, it was different for me. I know you said, you know, strap them up. Yeah. I said. Boy, I missed that game. <laughs> Boy, that's what I miss about it. I miss that, that competition that you saw uh -huh. yesterday. Yeah. That's what you miss. 
Because I saw those guys getting after it, but you saw the offensive line going one-on-one with the defensive line, and they weren't finishing one another. You may have him beat, but I'm not going to finish him and hurt him. They, but they were getting after one another. That's what you miss as a player. So you see that intensity still there. You see all those things. So I still think that they'll make the playoffs. They'll make a, a, a deep run. I don't see them getting back to the Super Bowl, though. Pete Carroll did a great coaching job last year. It's going to have to be double that this year. Yeah. There was a stat that came out that I didn't know. They had zero helmet-to-helmet penalties last year. Strike zone. Yeah. You know how hard it is to teach a guy to do that, then they go out there and execute that yeah. in this day and age of the NFL. Zero helmet-to-helmet penalties. That kind of coaching, to me, is going to be paramount for this team because you look at their schedule. Out of their last seven games, they have Kansas City, Arizona, San Francisco, Philadelphia, San Francisco at Arizona before they finish with St. Louis. Whatever leadership they don't have, they better have it for that final final part of this season because the early part's not going to be easy either. You got Green Bay, San Diego, Denver. The bye week they'll win that. Yep. But their first three games they're they're gonna be they're gonna have to deal with that. That leadership and that coaching, I think, is gonna have to be paramount more than ever it was last year because whatever motivational carrot he has to use to keep them hungry, yeah. the players have to buy in, especially now they've been well fed winning a Super Bowl championship. Bayless, your and final to, take. to your point, I think Arizona is going to be very good. I agree. And I think St. Louis is going to be very dangerous. Yep. But so, no bowl game for the Seahawks. I don't think they get a Super Bowl either. No That's bowl. A, yeah. No bowl. But I reserve the right to change. Well, no, no, no. That's right. I reserve the right to change. We haven't even seen one preseason.